The Trash Tag Challenge has people cleaning up the environment so they can post it online. Local groups are joining in on the movement. Since we live here and work here, why not clean up where we live and work? Tracking rain headed our way. The computer model says right around 6, 7 o'clock tonight. Possible heavy downpours and thunderstorms. Your forecast is next. Fires like this already. Well, despite all the late winter snow, firefighters tell us it wasn't enough to make up for a really dry fall. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Hi everyone, I'm Jane McCarthy. The weekend nearly here, so is the possibility of a lot of rain and thunderstorms. Yeah, let's get straight to Tom Sherry in the Weather Center tracking rain and storms across the region tonight, Tom. Yeah, they are coming. Hopefully they'll arrive after the commute time. Here it is two minutes until five o'clock. Most of the commuting taking place between five and six o'clock on this Friday. You've got this line of showers and thunderstorms uh, to just to the west of Spokane and to the south of Spokane. They're moving to the northeast right now at about 20 miles an hour. It's become very, we've seen very heavy rain uh, in the lower Columbia Basin around the Tri-Cities and near Yakima. And now you've got those showers that are uh, moving through Ritzville and some thunderstorm activity down in Whitman County, southeastern sections of Whitman County. Here's a closer view of those storms just to the south of Harrington, just to the west right now of Cheney. And again, even if we don't see thunderstorms with that particular cell that we're tracking moving up along I-90, we are going to see areas of heavy rain and possibly even some hail there as well. So again, we've got lots of wet weather on the way. Again, the computer modeling says certainly by 7 o'clock we're going to see the rain around the area continuing through 9. Looks like it decreases in the overnight hours. Actually, begins to clear out a little bit. I think Saturday morning will start off dry and then by about noon, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, more rain will move in. We'll see a high of 56 and don't even count on Sunday. Uh, get a movie. Uh, go to Redbox. Whatever you need to do. Sunday right now looks like we're going to be socked in with clouds and rain and wind and a daytime high of 55. Window for the weekend to get outside right now. Looks like it could be Saturday morning. I'll have the rest of your forecast coming right up. All right, Tom, thank you very much. Well, take a look at this. It's a photo of a small wildfire in North Idaho near the Canadian border, but the picture isn't from last summer. It was taken earlier this week, and believe it or not, it is possible for small wildfires to start even this early in spring. That's even with our very wet, snowy February. Creme 2's Taylor Vito explains why that's the case. Okay, so just because we had a snowy February and there was even some rain recently, don't think that these trees could be susceptible to fire. First off, there could potentially be some grasses below that could play a role. Then the trees have some parts that were already dry to begin with. So with the right conditions, especially wind and temperatures, they can catch on fire. The firefighters pictured here would certainly tell you that, no doubt. These photos are from Tuesday afternoon in Boundary County, north of Bonners Ferry. The fire was just a quarter acre and crews were quick to respond, but even one fire chief in that area I spoke with remarked that it was surprising to see timber burning this early. While it's not clear how the fire started, fire officials in the area say high winds helped it spread. And we have to be constantly on alert. We have to be vigilant. Um, on our preparation all year round. Chris Larson is the deputy fire marshal with the Northern Lakes Fire District in Hayden. While they cover part of the city, they still see their fair share of wildland fires, and likely so this year, even though our snowy February was one for the record books. So why a fire like this in early April? One factor can be grasses. We call them a one-hour field. They burn fast, and under all the snow, the grass stayed dead. The winds and the heat that we had when we had the 60-degree days that were out there actually dried out those fuels that haven't started growing yet. As for the trees, they can still be feeling the effects of a dry fall and dry first part of winter. In other words, some trees were already dry to begin with. Even though there was a month of snow cover, there were months and months of dry weather ahead of it. Plus, some branches under the tree's canopy aren't necessarily affected by snow. All that dead growth is still there and it becomes a potential uh, for a wildland fire to spread into the woods. And with some homeowners starting to burn slash piles, you can bet fire guys are hoping they do so safely because under the right conditions, it doesn't take long for some grasses to become dangerous. Once they're dried out, they'll just run really fast. In North Idaho, Taylor Vido, Creme 2 News. Firefighters responded to a small fire at the Rocket Market on Spokane South Hill this afternoon. They say it was likely started when a refrigerator full of wine overheated. No one was hurt. The market is closed for now. No word yet on how long that closure will last. 
Well, it is no secret the infrastructure here in the U.S. is in need of improvement, and a new report is showing which bridges in the inland northwest are the worst off. A new report lists which bridges are considered structurally deficient. And just after that report was released, WSU researchers published a study that found a specific de-icer is impacting bridge health. Grem 2's Amanda Rowley has more on the findings. Spokane County has one bridge listed in a new report that is the most traveled and structurally deficient. It's this I-90 bridge going over Hangman's Creek. Now, while inspections for bridges like this are done visually, a new study from Washington State University shows a certain de-icer is affecting bridge health and you can't even see it. Using concrete samples from bridges in Oregon, researchers found the ones exposed to magnesium chloride with repeated freeze and thaw cycles lost more strength than samples exposed to rock salt. Magnesium chloride is considered an environmentally friendly alternative to rock salt. It's also more effective in extremely cold temperatures. Researchers have known that many types of road salts cause chemical and physical deterioration, but it was still a mystery how microscopic changes could have an impact on a larger scale. Associate Professor Xian Min Shi led this study and found the formation of nano-sized crystals led to stress buildup and calcium leaching into the concrete. This meant a significant reduction in its strength. Basically, it's more like when people age, uh, the bone gets brittle because you're losing calcium. This is very similar to that. They also found that none of the magnesium chloride samples showed any typical visible stress on the surface. Instead, they found the worst effects to the concrete occurred half an inch to one inch inside the sample. The best approach is to use sodium chloride when sodium chloride is working effectively. And then when temperature on the pavement gets too cold, then you have to switch to either magnesium chloride or calcium chloride. The eastern region of Washington Department of Transportation says it uses magnesium chloride on a limited basis, specifically when the weather conditions are 15 degrees or lower. Spokesperson Ryan Overton says, though, it more often uses sodium or calcium chloride. Amanda Rowley, CREM 2 News. There is indeed a, an emergency on our southern border. It's been loud and clear. President Donald Trump visited the southern border today to take part in a roundtable discussion with law enforcement and the immigration officials. Yesterday, he backed off his threat to shut down the southern border with Mexico after southern lawmakers argued it would hurt the U.S. economy. Construction of the first new fencing built under the Trump administration is slated to begin soon in the Rio Grande Valley. At least five puppies adopted out by Spokanimal over the weekend contracted parvo. The outbreak prompted the shelter to close its dog area to the public and the volunteers also for the next 10 days. The dogs are now receiving treatment. Staff say they closed the dog house area of the shelter out of an abundance of caution. Parvo can be deadly to unvaccinated puppies. Symptoms include bloody diarrhea, vomiting, and dehydration. The shelter says owners who recently adopted vaccinated and older dogs don't need to worry about the outbreak. Well, you may have noticed something positive trending on social media. It's called the Trash Tag Challenge. You take a photo of any litter or trash you found, and then another photo after you've cleaned it up. The trend is leading to cleaner communities all over the world. Crem Juice Tim Pham shows us how people in Spokane are making a difference here at home. Remember these challenges from dancing outside of a moving car to throwing vans in the air. Some are downright dangerous while others are just strange. But something new is trending and it's catching on here in Spokane. On Facebook and Instagram and everywhere else and just thought it was super cool and we wanted to be a part of it. It's called the Trash Tag Challenge and here's how it works. You'll start with a before picture then you will clean it up and take an after picture with all of the trash bags that uh, you've cleaned up in the clean area that you've just cleaned up. Four tech sergeants with the Washington Air National Guard decided to make a difference right outside of their downtown office. Wrappers, cigarette butts, and even needles. Look out for needles, uh, open bottles, and make sure you're looking out for cans. It's someone else's trash, but to them, it doesn't matter who's responsible because this is their home too. Since we live here and work here, why not clean up where we live and work? 
The movement has gone around the world. More than 10,000 posts on Instagram and thousands more on Facebook. Some projects were big, but this shouldn't deter you because many hands can make a difference. If everybody around the world did that, it took five minutes right now and cleaned up. What a huge difference that would make. It's about service before self. It's a challenge promoting something positive. This team hopes stays viral. Everybody lives here in the community, so it's important to take part of that, um, take care of your community and give back. Anyone can participate really at any time, anywhere. Just be sure to take before and after pictures and tag the Trash Tag Challenge. Reporting in Spokane, I'm Tim Pham, Krem 2 News.